Okay, here we go with some more critiques on the lilies. And I'm going to be doing Carol's first. And um, for Carol, I love this. I absolutely love this. I love that you um, found those, you know, brilliant spots that were in the um, reference photo. And the thing about reference photos versus our paintings is that is this. We have to decide where to edit and where to, um, you know, correct it. If it's in a photo, um, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't translate uh, the way it should in a painting. Now, this down here, I really love these hot spots down here. But you can pick and choose um, some of the highlights and figure out which ones you want to, um, you know, glaze over and just kind of and, and or soften an edge here or there. Okay, so I'm going to show you. I see I rubbed this one out uh, a big bubble so, you, so I could uh, dem demonstrate that for you. And um, although it's like, you know, it's not as white bright as yours. However, here's what you can do. This is like for a water drop, too. Um, generally, there might be a little bit of a shadow on one side. And I'm just laying a little bit of blue there. And then I'm going to, with a, I'm cleaning my brush. With a damp brush, you can kind of rub it a little bit and then pull it over, like so. And that softens one side, right? And then this out and you can have like a little bit of a shadow there behind the bubble and you take um I just I just dipped it right directly into the blue so it was a little bit um, it's a little bit thicker and then you're gonna come over here and drop some color right behind it now I don't think the camera's picking that up but um, I'll kind of exaggerate, like, so you can see. Um, that looks like a marble. Okay, so you go in there and soften those edges. So here we go. Okay. You want to leave some of the white, of course. Um, and I'm going to dab it out just a tad right there. And then go in one more time and darken one little edge of this, okay? Let's see. Where is the back? Okay, I'll give it more than that. Okay, so as you can see right here, I, I drew it in for you in a smaller version. And and you can go around um, all sides if you want and soften it. And then you're going to have, you know, more of a um, uh, more of a little highlight that's already been um, somewhat softened. Now this is this is turning a much darker because I scrubbed it out. But um, you know the choice is yours. So if you if you feel that the edges are too hard, you know, you probably have already fixed this. I bet. So I think I read somewhere in one of the threads that your that um, when you took the frisket off, the edges were too too hard. Stop that right there. Okay. Now, let's see. Okay, Carol, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing one more time. Okay. The water up here. Now, it's your choice again. See, I've got your original here. Your original. And I even was show, um, on one of them, I went a little bit darker to see what that would look like. And I have that one right here. Okay, and then, of course, me being me, I even went darker just to see 
how how that would set that back. And I think it's I think it's too it's too uh, sad looking, for lack of a better word. Because when I took this back and looked at yours again, I'm going, you know, that's really pretty. So it's up to you. Um, you know, these highlights back here, you could glaze them back a little bit and, um, you know, not have them pop forward so much. You know, just, just a little. Just add a little bit of color right in there. Um, I don't think this is jumping up. You know, it looks nice and flat. Um, yeah, so if you want, if, you know, because it's hard for me to see, see from this image because I know the color is off a little bit when I print them out, but I see movement back here. Now, if you want to just add a little bit of mo more movement and just have the eye, you know, if you want to draw the eye back in, you, you can find that direction up in here okay um, so the choice is yours like this right here what I did was I was thinking since you have this highlight here you might want to take um, permanent rose and just glaze back over that and then bring your your um, you know your watermarks this way on back just a few just a few not not a whole lot Okay, not a whole lot, Joyce. Okay, okay. So if you want to do, you know, if you want to do that, just a little bit. Um, but I'm looking at now. Okay, so let's go back to your original and look at that, and and then see see if that works for you. Um, oh, your original's here. I'm just painting on it. Okay. Um, so so the choice is yours, of course. And you can pull some um, pink from here and then back over here, up in here, if you like. Just a little light touch. Huh. Okay. Then I was looking at I was looking at your um, at your uh, petals. And I don't know. You know, I think they look really good. Um and I'm wondering if, you know, if if some of them, you know, you don't have to do this either. Um, you know, there's just always, there's always one more thing, right? Because um, I'm sure you guys are just tired of this poor image. Um, you know, if you want to just go in and lightly add a little something. But I think it's, I think these petals are looking really good. But I did do that on your, um, on the image that I'm going to send to you. So you can ignore it or you can try it if you want. Um, it's up to you. I just put a little bit of deep, deepening, you know, little glazes here and there. This, so this is really detail work up in here. These two guys, you know, they're like eyeballs coming up from underneath the lily pad. Um, so I kind of, um, you know, added a little something, but I didn't want to take all of your highlights away, of course, because you worked so hard putting that frisket down, but it's up to you. Um, also, I, I showed one more pass of, you know, just a glaze here and there, not the whole water. If you, if you feel like you want to add a little bit, few more swirls, oops, you can do that. You know, that's, that's just, that's up for grabs. Um, this part right here, I found really interesting how you got this lip going up. And I don't know, maybe you've got it because it looks like the blue stops there. And that's kind of, you know, indicating where the where it starts to rise and fall. Okay. And if you if you want to just put a little bit of a glaze there and a little bit of a glaze there. Okay, so I'm I'm um detail kind of gal because because I don't get that many opportunities to detail out a painting with students. So I, I like to take this opportunity to, you know, be able to give you even more information because usually the DVDs, they get edited and they get edited down and the detail part kind of disappears from the um, filming. It ends up on the editing floor room, but um, uh, if you want, if you want to, you know, tweak this a little bit, you can. Um, but that's up to you, because I 
think if this is darkened a little I like the I like that you put that pink glaze all the way around but if this is like darkened at the tips this bottom part will glow even more or is it that we need you know a dark darker um, waters going back you know so that th that's up to you okay now that I've um, painted all over your original again so that that might be up to you like um, more dramatic, you know, glazes in the front. So I'm, I'm looking for that glow. Okay. Um, let's see what else. I think that's about it. Surprise. We're done. Okay. So, so very nice. Very nice. I love, love, love these movements. And I love that you went back in and you did paint, you know, the water one more time. And I really think your successes, you know, show throughout this whole painting. Um, very nice, very nice. And your hot, hot spots here, and you got your shadows looking good. Um, this right here is looking a little flat. And and here's a tip if if you care to take it, um, or just let it rest, and maybe someday you'll get back to it. I don't know. That's up to you. Uh, let's see, what am I going to do? I'm going to um, take a little bit more of an earth tone here. Oops, I went right around your bubble. Oop, oop. Or let's put it right here. Well, maybe when the, those bubbles get settled down and you have that darker shadow there, you can whip that right around here. Okay, and not have to disturb too much. Yeah, let's do that. And then come on out. Oops. It's hard painting on this Xerox paper or the paper that comes out of the printer. Um, okay. So, yeah, so try that um, if you want. And that will settle it down, okay, from that. Um, I also showed a little bit more of texture here on, the, on this outer uh, leaf if you like, because it gives it more of, I'm, I'm looking for this to be a little rounder. And um, that's just a minor little, you know, movement, a glaze of some sort right there. You can connect it and go on up and disappear. Okay. So that's about it. As far as um, congrats, you got through it. You did good. You did really good. And, um, I know uh, we're looking at everyone else's images and, and Ewan and I know them and, um, but you and me, you know, heavy handed, that's who we are. So I just embrace it. You know, I, that's, that's all I can do. I can embrace it or I can try and change my style completely, but I choose to embrace it. And I hope you do too, because I think your painting's lovely and I think, uh, you know, very successful. Okay. So that's it for Carol. Now we're going to get to Tina. And Tina, um, I do have, um, let's see, I have your, your corrections, suggestions. And, you know, right there, that's watermark. So, so ignore that. It, uh, it, just, it just dropped onto the Xerox when I was painting here, trying to decide whether or not you know, if you if you if you're gonna fill up to lifting or what you might want to do, okay. Again, when I look at this on the monitor, you know, when you submit the, your image, it's really it's really vivid, bright, and pretty. But when I go to print it out, I I get a darker version, and it might be my printer with the you know the ink might be coming out. So to Air and caution. I'm going to assume that this is this is fairly dark in here, but y you be the judge, okay? So um, here's my suggestions. My suggestions are, um, you know, like again, detailing a few more of these um, petals in the in the way back. You can you can add just a little bit more of a glaze, but that's that's up to you because I can see that you have that here. And, and that is um, 
you know, and that's beautiful right there because that brings this forward and this forward. And I'm just wondering if maybe there's some way we could get a little bit more tone in here, here. And um, this looks great. This looks fabulous. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So if you were to lift, and I, I know you use the, um, the um, magic erasers, um, and uh, I'm I tried them out, but I'm not all that, you know, well versed in them. So I'm just gonna go old school. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. I'm just gonna lift again, and 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 again. Um, you know, this is just my suggestion, and you, you can take it for um, and decide on your own. So scrubber, okay. And I know I've um, actually uh, demoed this before. So the scrubber, if that if you feel like you don't want to take all that much paint off, like the square will work. The square right here. And usually you can get enough off. And so I turn my painting sideways like this. And um, and you can design up the, the water again. Okay, just the way you want it. And you can move the pigment down. Okay, drop water, drop water, drop water. And just move it down. And I put phthalo green on top of this for this demo, because um, that's a stain. It's staining, and just in case, if I don't know what um, pigments you use, so if you have a staining color, um, usually at this point of the game, you can get this staining color up because um, it's it's on top. You know, if it was the last, if it was the last glaze. Um, but the cool thing is, if you have a staining color underneath, and, and even if it's not, you know, once you do it in this direction, you'll see some of that uh, pigment under um, still remain. And I feel like I'm telling you this, but you already know this. So, okay, there we go. Now, if you wanted to paint back into it, you would take, um, you would burnish it down with the back of a spoon or some, um, there's those boning tools. They're like ivory and they're for folding um, stationery. And uh, those are cool because you can just burnish right on top of that. Um, if you don't have uh, a, a spoon available, I use the back of my nail. I know, it's probably awful. So I lift it right in here and here, oh, like right there. And you just burnish it down because I don't have a spoon available. Do I? No, I don't. Um, you burnish it down real good. And sometimes if, you, if you're afraid you're gonna muck up the pigment, you could take a piece of, piece of tracing paper and just lay it down and burnish right onto the tracing paper. Um, okay, and then here we go. So then we can just go and paint right back over it and it'll accept the paint without leaving that fuzzy because you, the fibers of the um, the fibers of the of the paper are are exposed, and then when you burnish it, they lay back down. So you're making them behave. Okay, making the paper behave. Okay, and then you can just paint right back in there, and um, all is well. Okay. Unlike that one, I didn't burnish that one down, and it gave me a little bit of trouble, didn't it? So. Um, so there you go. Now, if you want, you know, once it's dry and you want to get back in there after you've burnished it you, and you want to add a little bit more, it seems silly lifting and then adding, but um, sometimes you can just go back in and, and exaggerate the water mark, uh, movement even more and pick and choose where you want to uh, lay that pigment. Okay, now that ha was not burnished and I can, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me get it close. You can see that kind of it kind of runs out it doesn't lay properly see how it's moving there and plus it's still wet um, but it would do that even not as severe but it will do that um, if you don't burnish it down 
but uh, anyway, so let's see. So that's that's that. And then um, let's see. I was looking at uh, well, that, that's all I've got for you, Tina. Tina from North Carolina. My goodness gracious, because you, your your petals are just gorgeous, and everything else is just gorgeous. It's just wonderful. Um, this lily pad couldn't look more vibrant and fun. And um, it looks like you just had a lot of fun with this. And I just love that. And I'm, I'm just so happy that you took this class and you showed us all this light handed work right here because it, it makes me just ooh and ah when I look at it. And I'm just, I'm just thrilled. So, and you've got even little bubbles in there. I just noticed that. Very good. Very good. Okay, so this is uh, your choice, your choice. I'm just going off my, my um, copy of the image. Uh, seems like it's more on the blue side. Uh, it might be the lighting, I'm not quite sure, or it might be my printer, but who knows? We'll just call it my, my printer. My printer is the one. Okay, very good, Tina. And then now we're going to move over to Barbara's. And again, let's see, what do we have? Okay, Barbara. Here's Barbara's original, okay? And, okay, I love this piece. I'll tell you why. And when I opened up her image, this just glowed. I thought this just glowed and, you know, and I could be because there's, well, first of all, she has a nice yellow uh, glaze happening on these petals, which I think are fabulous. And I also like that this is muted back and it's not drawing your eye away from the, you know, the focal point here. And I love the, the work right in here. It was, it's simplified. It's not, it's not overworked. It's just lays there beautifully and it doesn't draw too much attention up here. Okay. And, and so when I opened this up, I thought, oh my gosh, I, I went, oh, it's so pretty. Because right in here, it keeps your eye right focused in this area. And that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And I wish I did that on mine. <laughs> this I love. I love the reflection coming down here. Very nice. Now, the only thing, well, the only thing, um, well, there's more than that. Now that I'm looking at my corrections, I think I got a little overzealous in these corrections. I just don't want to leave anything out for you guys, the possibilities. Um, so I just went ahead and I, I suggested maybe a little bit more movement back here. And that's, you know, that's just it's a matter of glazing some more um, the, the blue and then drawing it back. And then, I, of course, I went over here and I, I messed up your beautiful uh, lily pad. So I would ignore that if you could, please. <laughs> okay, now what I'm trying to say here is um, your water movement here needs to be, it needs to be like not so stripy. You know, so so what I would do is just actually make these um, some of these areas a little, you know, thick and thin kind of thing, a little bit more random instead of um, too uh, so similar. Okay, so that is about it. That's all I would suggest right there, and I'm not getting it to um, go away. Okay, so the stripes to go away. Um, but that's, again, we're working on um, this paper. Okay, so right here, what I did was I painted some stripes so we could talk about it and see if, and, um, if it would work on this canvas, okay? Okay, so here we go. Um, so if there's too much stripiness, you can actually make a new movement right in between the stripes and then hit it like so. So you just make it that and then thin and then skip and then do it again over here. Another random movement that... Um, 
see, I think, I think what's going on here, and, and I do this all the time. Um, when I go to lay a brush stroke down, I think about it too much. And I'm learning this because I'm learning how to do really quick paintings right now. And um, when I don't think about it, it's just so much more believable. You know, the brush stroke, you just, when you go in for a brush stroke, you go in with confidence instead of just kind of, you know, one, two, three. And that's one of those uh, uh, barriers that I am trying to overcome myself. So instead of second guessing, I, I'll just go in and out and just random strokes. And once you lay the brush down and you load it up nice and juicy, you lay the brush down and commit and don't go back. Okay. That is, that to me is one of the harder, um, things is not to, to detail it out. Okay. So that in itself, I think is worth the price of admission is learning, learning to be a little more free with your brush strokes. Instead of thinking about it, just lay it down, leave it alone. And like here, I, I that would drive me crazy. I, cause I, overpainted in this area I would want to come in and go whoop now maybe that's not so bad but then I go whoop and then I start in and instead of um, putting my brush down so I think at the beginning when you're learning how to have these um, fabulous little brush strokes that are that are are more fluid and and let the brush do the work um, putting, you know, pulling the brush away. That's hard. That's really hard. It's hard for me. I'm sure some, for some people, it might not be that hard. So again, I'm going to do a couple brush strokes up here and that, and then I'm going to sign off for you guys. Okay. So while I'm getting my paint ready, I want to tell you guys how happy I am with the, with the core group that ended up, um, you know, sticking it out. <laughs> Thank you so much. I so appreciate it. Um, so here we go. Brush strokes, you know, just have it random. You know, you can even turn your brush, get, get a flat and then go thin and done. Okay. And, and sideways too. have your painting sideways. And if I was standing straight in front of it, like I should be straight, thin down, while it's still wet, if you want to knock a darker, a darker movement, go for it. Darker movement, go for it. And let the water do the, the, the work, okay? Because we do plenty of work as it is. Um, there we go, right there. Okay, so remember, fluid brush strokes. Once you lay the brush down, commit to it. And... Um, yeah, don't work so hard. Okay. Okay. Thanks you guys. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this, um, this course. You guys were awesome. I just think that, um, it took a little to get us going once we got moving in the right direction. It was very cool. Um, I'm going to be teaching another course in October and it's a, um, it's a cut crystal and glass course. And um, it's a repeat, but they seem to think that there was a lot of requests for it. So I agreed to do um, another course with them in October. And I look forward to it. So you all take care. And um, don't forget to paint the sides. And if you have any, any questions uh, for me about varnishing, when you get to that point, give me, give me a ring or email me. And I look forward to seeing any, anything else you want to submit because um, I'm there for you. You can always email me with questions and or, yeah, questions or anything just to say hi. Okay, take care. Thank you, and I'll talk to you soon.